What's up, nerds? Welcome to Nintendo Pow Block for August 11th, 2017. I'm one of your hosts, Corey Derrick, and alongside me, as always, that retro code, Edward Varnell. Yes, everybody, it's time for a Pow Block. Woo! Oh, man. And joining us, Ed, we have a guest. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Ed, you're so excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, from Nerd Overdrive, El Capitan himself. Ray Osorio. Yay! What's, what's up, guys? Rise above. Hey, to me, Mario. <laughs> <laughs> Ray, I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> Thanks, Corey, for having me. I'm, I'm, ah, it's always a good time. Ray, I want you on all of our shows all the time. Do you <laughs> understand that? Oh, even on the Xbox show, because you don't have an Xbox, but you can still come and talk <laughs> and yeah. No, there. I want to get on. I get on. I want to get on Nerds Gone Platinum. I want to. I want to guest host there sometime. Just, I'm gonna message Moose right now because they're <laughs> looking for guests all the time. And I want to. Yes. I want to go back on on there too because I bought a lot of PlayStation stuff recently, and I'm really excited. Oh man, Nintendo Pow Block! I'm so excited. Yes. Yes. Oh man. All right, here we go. What do you guys been playing? Anything exciting? Anything good? Super Smash Brothers getting my butt kicked. Wait, what? Yeah, I was playing Super Smash over the over the weekend uh, with my friend that I was telling you about, and yeah, she kicked my butt. Ah. Uh, Mar- wow. Mario Kart was a little better, but yeah, like and see the thing is, is I, I I really feel like I'm good at Smash Brothers, so for her to beat me the way she did, I feel kind of sadly emasculated. I'm like, I feel wrong, my ego. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's funny. Uh, no. Anything else, that, right? Uh, uh, that's, uh, well, Overwatch. Lots and lots of Overwatch. <laughs> yeah, I played a lot of Overwatch last night, too. I was, uh, apparently Ray sent me an invite, and I was playing. I was too into my match, I guess. Ray's like, are you, I, uh, I'm sorry, Ray. I feel really bad. Yeah, now. I was just like, I was like, what the heck? No, but yeah, no. Like the entertaining thing is, I do the voice, I do some of the voice lines for some of the characters. People are like, that's really good. Like Reinhardt, don't worry, my friends, I am your shield. People are like, holy crap, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh, experienced my first uh, body slam with Doomfist. It was uh... oh Doom. Uh, the, uh, okay, as we call Be- I know this cancer. I know, I know every team. Every team has Doomfist on it, no matter what mode you play. I just want to. I just want to. I know this is a Nintendo show, but this is really bu- bugging me, and I need to talk to somebody about this. How come Doomfist can body slam through walls and ceilings and tunnels? Like, how can he just go through? Why do they allow him to do that? that I don't is, know why. It's kind of broken, yeah. That is not fair because it's I saw him do it, and I ran into a built. I ran into a building. Okay. And then he followed you into the building. No, he the, used his super outside, yeah, and, it, and he and it finished it, inside. It, yes. It, it, it. I was like, what? What? There no. is no. Hi- there is no hiding from the doom fist. That is broken. <laughs> that is broken. Yeah. I'm sorry, Blizzard. So Corey, mind you, like, okay, the whole year and whatever that Overwatch has been out, I got probably like three or four, five gold medal games, meaning that I was gold in every category you can get a medal in. Since Doomfist launched, I've had eight, five gold medal games because people pick Doomfist instead of picking your healer or picking your support. So then I play soldier, so I'm healing people with my biotic field. Right. And so I'm getting gold in healing because of that. Wow. Yeah, it's terrible. Well, <laughs> wow. last night, last night with Lucio, I had a bronze in eliminations, a silver in damage dealt. And then two other gold medals in healing and in uh, objective time. Objective time. Oh, and I had a silver in objective kills. And now, now that I know you're back in the swing of Overwatch, I'm gonna start sending you my my, my screenshots of my great games when I get like four or five gold medals. Be like, hey Corey, check this out. Nice. Can't wait. I had I I had a game in Mystery Heroes where I went twenty one and zero and one life with Tracer. Wow. And I had, Dude, Tracer. I, had, uh, oh, I hate <laughs> Tracer so much. I hate Tracer so much. Like. We you can't snipe tracer because she just moves so fast and re, like her rewind mechanic just and like but the thing with her rewind mechanic she's in both places at once so if you aim where she was or aim where she's going you can still hit her yeah but like I don't it's I 
I don't care because I'm not a sniper. But like if I'm Lucio, my projectiles are too slow. Uh, you know, it's just uh, can't can't do it. But I just I just want to point out that I'm a really good healer. And if anybody out there needs a healer on PlayStation Four, I will be playing Lucio. Right here, I, I need a healer. Yes. Yes. I need healing. I need healing. I'm the one, I'm the one character when we don't have a healer. Just to be spiteful when I'm leading the team, I'm just like I need I need healing. I need healing, and nobody ever changes to a healer. I'm then always usually a healer. one of our group. <laughs> one of our group will probably change over to a healer. Like if Paul's playing with me or Muffins, they'll switch to Mercy, and they'll play Mercy. But it's just, it gets annoying when there's no healers, and when I'm leading the entire team in kills, objective kills, objective time, healing, and damage done. <laughs> right. Right. I, I I always play healer. I refuse to play anything else because like I suck at everything else. Except like I'll play a Reinhardt once in a while and uh I think Orissa is pretty is, they've done some things with her. I think are really cool. I like the shield. Especially on the uh Temple of Anubis uh level where like you go from uh you go into that last from point. the square from yeah. the plaza into the temple yeah. point. Yeah. Where it's all like that there. shield is like oh yeah. Well, there's your Overwatch minute, everybody. Uh, playing anything else, Ray? Um, I I had beaten Fire Emblem. Uh, Fire Emblem Shadows. I beat that. Uh, do you like game. it? I like it. I mean, do you like it as much as like Fates or Awakening? Uh, no, Awakening is still my my favorite of the 3DS ones. So no, um, and then my favorite one before that was the Game Boy Advance one, the original Fire Emblem. Yeah. That the one that no, that's the DS one. It had like a gold box. You're thinking about the one you're thinking about is Shadow Dragon was the one for the DS. We had like a gold box uh, for it with blue writing. Yeah, because that's the that's my actual first Fire Emblem game that I brought. Uh, yeah, I. I don't know how I feel about it yet. I'm, I was excited to play it, and then it's like, I don't know. I I'm enjoying it, but it's not my favorite. I still like, I still like Birthright and Awakening. Like Birthright, way yeah, Birthright and Conquest were good, but I'm, Awakening is still my favorite. Right of those, um, but yeah, that and uh, some more Breath of the Wild. I played some more of that because I'm playing that on Wii U. Um, Isn't it just the? Best? It's been. It's been. It's. It's. But the, my problem is, is that I have with every open world game, is I know where I need to go. I need know what I need to do, but I do everything else in between. Yeah. Well, that's the. That's the <laughs> best part. Exactly. Uh, but no. But the thing is, is like, okay, I'm gonna try and get to this next part of the game so I can progress the story, so I can try and actually beat this game. But then I'm like, no, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna go over there and then. Yeah, and then it's just so, like two hours later, I'm like, I did nothing I planned on doing. So it's not the game's fault. It's your fault. <laughs> oh, no, that's how I am with every open world game. I'm like that with every open world game where uh, like Assassin's Creed Syndicate, it took me forever to beat it because I was too busy running around doing all the side missions and liberating this part and that See, part and this and doing that. I, th- I think when you do have side missions in open world games, that's different than what you do in Breath of the Wild. Um, because there's like there's really no side missions in it unless you choose that you want to do it. Like you could go and get the four guardians and try to beat Ganon with a stick or something. Like yeah, but then I get ch- stuck looking looking for the stupid seeds and this, that, the other, and then mm-hmm. it's just like you know, you know, Ray, you're talking to the Korok Seed Master here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, dude! I mm, I love Zelda so much. I love it so much. I almost started a new game the other day because I loved it so much and I miss it. Just saying, it's really good. Yeah. Uh, but I I understand you. It's like I'm like, okay, I've got like three side quests. I'm gonna try to go do them. And like two hours go by, and I haven't even done the first one. I'm like, hmm, mm-hmm. I forgot what I was doing because I'm too busy climbing stuff, going over here, climbing stuff, looking. Oh, what's over there? Oh, yeah. that looks interesting. Let me go check that out. And it's not. Oh. And it's not like it's not like it's just a boring landscape over there. Everything you go to, there's something there, mm-hmm. whether it's a Korok seed or a side quest or 
you know, one of those statues or, or, you know, a shrine, like there's something everywhere you want to go. Everything is in that place in that game with a purpose. And that's like, Mm -hmm. that's something that happens. That's something not a lot of open world games do. Like I, before you get to your point, Ed, sorry, I, sorry. Uh, but like I've been playing horizon and that game, that's what I was just about to touch on. That game is really, really awesome. But some of the, some of the areas in that open world are just big open spaces with, like you know, I mean, you'll find find uh, things to pick up and and fight some robot dinosaurs and stuff, which is cool. But there's not like a key item over here or you know a side quest over here. It's yeah, it's, but it's all about experience, and and that's yeah. one thing you have to be careful with in Horizon is if you spend a lot of your time exploring, you will get OP. Yeah, I know. You will get so strong. I know. By the time you actually go start playing the story, you're like, um. Well, that's yeah, what I'm trying to do now. You, I'm trying to fill he... up. Oh, sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead. Oh. Go ahead, Corey. Okay. I'm trying to. Right now, I'm. I'm, per, I'm 22 hours into Horizon. And I'm. Right now, I'm like, okay, I need to. I just want to do some side stuff. Like, I'm trying to get all the uh, full suns in the. Uh, hunting lodges or the the hunting grounds. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm trying to find all the metal flowers. I'm trying to uh, find all the vantage points. I'm I'm trying to platinum this game. This is going to be my first platinum trophy, and that's embarrassing to say, but it's going to be my first platinum trophy. And then I'm going to go on to Nerds Gone Platinum and say, I got my first platinum. I don't see how you don't have your platinum being freaking uh, what you call it, uh, Walking Dead, because that seems to be that seemed to be a lot I've, of people's first platinum. I for didn't PlayStation. I didn't play the Walking Dead. PlayStation. I don't know why you didn't. Because I. Don't, that's like season one like is, is stupid Walking easy Dead. platinum. I don't like Telltale. Games All you got to so do is just do janky. the chapters, right? Yeah. Yep, for the first one. Yeah, because that's how uh, Batman the Telltale Adventure is. Uh, because I got like a straight thousand points achievements on um, Xbox yeah. for it. Yeah, and I played The Wolf Among Us on 360. So, Wolf Among Us is an amazing game. Though. Oh, I know The Wolf Among so Us. So awesome. good. I just wish Telltale would stop being so janky. Ugh. Anyways. Well, that's because they got all these licenses and properties and all that kind of stuff to where now they got to do the Batman thing, and then they they're working on Batman Hardcore, and then then they were doing Walking Dead, and then they did Borderlands. And, you know, then they're doing, you know, they did Game of Thrones, you know, so they have their priorities. You can tell where their priorities are. And unfortunately, Wolf Among Us is down on the totem pole right now. Well, it's not till next year for season not two. Not till next year, but when did Wolf Among Us come out? Last year? It was 2015, I believe. I thought it came out last year. Now you're going to make me Google it, Ed. <laughs> Fine. Because if only uh, we had this large place at our fingertips to well, check information. Uh, Corey, can I address the Horizon thing? No, you guys look that up. I want to do it anyway. Um, <laughs> I think Horizon fails on its side quest and kind of its open world because I, I think there's. I, I think the open. I think it's great. What's wrong with it? I think it fails because it's really not, been that long. No way, it's been that long. What is it like? Two thousand eleven. 2013. 13. Really? Yeah, the first episode of Wolf Among Us came out October 11, 2013. And then it subsequently came to PS4 in 2014. And that's that, what I was thinking. Thinking Xbox One yeah. Yeah, was 2014. So it's been f- four years since it came out altogether three years since it came out to the current big platforms and we're not seeing another one so in the time that they released walking dead and then released wolf among us we've seen two other seasons of walking dead batman game of thrones what the heck else the tales of the borderlands so that now that's why i said we see where wolf among us comes on their priorities maybe Uh, maybe because they had everything else planned first and then wolf among us uh they decided to do that as the next property because Walking Dead is done after their season, after this last season, or is it one more season? Are they? Doing I think they I think they haven't announced it, but they're hinting at their hiring for another season of Walking Dead. Okay. So more than likely, they're probably going to be using getting more assets and more people to work on the project. Um, 
I just hope they, they don't keep biting off more than they can chew because it seems like they got a lot on their plate for being not a huge studio. Um, right. Because they probably was doing Guardians of the Galaxy too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Also, oh, yeah. I forgot about Guardians. There's Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy coming, and all that. All I can say is I hope to ever loving video game gods everywhere that they fix their broken ass engine. That engine of theirs that they use to run their games, it's so janky and so broken. I don't think it's broken. I don't know. Oh, I don't it's, I, it's broken. I think um, they launched th- they launched Tales of the Borderlands on PlayStation with Xbox button prompts. <laughs> they did. That's broken. Mori has a point. <laughs> I did not see oh because I didn't play that one. <laughs> Oh wow! I, that I did. I know some people were talking about the engine, but I guess partly because I only played uh, Batman and uh, I have Walking on PS4, um, and uh, with the Muggers on PS4, I guess I just played them and I never noticed they had a, having them having a broken engine. Huh. So. Uh, I mean, I think they fixed it a little bit with Batman. I think they tried to make some improvements, but there's, uh, I don't know. But anyways, Ed, what have you been playing? Um, going down the list, uh, 3DS, uh, Dragon Quest Seven. I mean, Dragon Quest Eight. Um, been finishing that up, working on that. Uh, for Xbox One, I did my less learning, uh, my less learn on Ikaruga, and uh, Gears of War 4, talking about shooters and uh, teaching about that. Uh, playing Mass Effect Andromeda, getting a little bit further in that, doing side quests, and uh, hitting, uh, I think I'm close to almost the end of the game. And uh, PlayStation 4, Uncharted 4, uh, and Metal Slug Anthology is what I've been playing. Um, Uncharted 4, I kind of restarted, um, and I'm just still collecting stuff from there, uh, getting some more hidden treasure that I miss. Uh, but yeah, that's all I've been playing at the moment. And then I'll be getting oh. to my Wii U like, uh, later on to do uh, Tokyo Mirage Session and Paper Mario Color Splash and Star Fox Avenge. Star Fox Zero. I'm sorry. Oh, oh yeah, I did play Uncharted 4 because we did the pod and play. Yes. Um, that we, I did play Uncharted 4 through the beginning part, and that re- that just reminded me how much I love that game series again. And I, I actually did pop it on and start playing a little more. And it's just like I don't know if I'm ready to play it again yet. Like actually, like fully play through all the way through it again. Mm-hmm. Well, you should you should wait because Lost Legacy is coming out, which seems like the most interesting Uncharted that's come out since two for me at least. Um, I think I think Lost Legacy looks cool. I keep seeing new trailers and stuff for it, and it's just like I think it looks really good. But anyways, I'd continue. Sorry. Oh. Um- yeah, I'm kind of interested in Lost Legacy. Um, uh, stories, Path of Destinies, uh, still collecting the endings for that. Um, and I think I'm close to uh, planning that game because uh, I'm like 74% done. I just got to get the endings and then uh, I'll be finished with that. Uh, other than that, uh, that's all I've kind of been playing. I'm thinking of trying Devil May Cry, but I want, and I want to, uh, or DMC, I want to do it on hardcore. Um, want to do it on a higher difficulty and see uh, how challenging that game is. You're uh, you're a glutton for punishment because I know oh just gosh. like nin- Ninja Gaiden on normal mm-hmm. is like brutal enough, and then you go put it on hard, and it's just like even more so. I'm like, oh, you want to know what's funny with Ninja Gaiden? I don't think it's hard. I think that camera angle just jacked everybody up. It was like team. Team Ninja was on some good cocaine when they made that game. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Camera cocaine. <laughs> Nint- <laughs> Nintendo Power Block and Nerd Overdrive and El Capitan say kids don't do drugs. <laughs> it <was> because <laughs> we do not encourage the use of <laughs> recreational drugs. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, reason and, and and I think that's why I feel like when they work with Nintendo to make Metroid Other M, I think Nintendo taught them on how to make a better action game. Because you don't have those camera problems that Team Ninja is known for with Ninja Gaiden 1 and Ninja Gaiden 2. I think it's just the style, though. They went with a different style for other M that they couldn't really use their normal Ninja Gaiden. They, can't, they couldn't use the camera control. because you had to use the controller sideways. Yeah. Well, like, there's no well, camera control at all. Well, I, well, not really. It, I think it's... Which is fine because there's game. There's good games out there that 
don't have camera it's controls. Camera. Like, yeah. like God of War never used camera control at all, and that game is is fine without it. Uh, but, anyways, Diablo, but, same thing. I yeah. love Diablo, and mm-hmm. it's isometric camera yeah. over the top. I, I think that was just the problem with Team Ninja was when they released their games, uh, Ninja Gaiden. The camera was like one of the problems that they. Uh, that was just unforgivable for him. So I think that's where the difficulty part comes from. Because I think if they had a wide shot, kind of like almost like Bayonetta or Bayonetta 2, um, oh, I think the fight... You I think said the, the magical B word. <laughs> or Bayonetta? Well, or even, or even um, Enslaved. Like Ninja Theory. Oh, Odyssey to the West. Yes, I love the yeah. Slave to Odyssey to the West. That was a good. You know, I'll give you that one. But you and your love for Bayonetta. Please don't go on a thirty-five minute rant about no, Bayonetta again. No, I know. I'm just saying that if I'm not. I'm just saying that if it was right enough that you could see all the enemies, uh, and be able to move around in the Ninja Garden games like Bayonetta, I think it would have been easier for people to be able to handle Ninja Garden for its normal difficulty. Because you couldn't really control the camera, and that camera really messed you up sometimes. Oh, it was jarring because when you would shoot across or whenever you would use a skill that would make you kind of move around really fast, yeah, the camera just didn't seem like it could keep up. Keep up, yeah. Yeah. So, Corey, what else did you play this week? That's it? No. I played a lot of games this week, dude. I played some Splatoon Oh, I played too. some Injustice. Injustice was fun. Yeah, Injustice I need. Too. I want. I want to. I want to play Injustice really bad. I love that first one so much. Uh, I don't. I didn't care for the first one. We can, we could work out an arrangement because I have it. Who <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> me? No, uh, I uh, I'll make you an offer you can't refuse. <laughs> I played a lot of Splatoon two. Uh, I played some more Fire Emblem Echoes. Uh, Man, I still don't know how I feel about the game. But uh, I don't know how I feel about the ending. Still, when you beat it, we'll talk about it. Okay, we'll have to. We'll have us one of them spoiler casts. Uh, I played a lot on PlayStation this week. Actually, uh, played Bloodborne with Matt. Uh, two bosses away from the end, and I'm going to start a new game plus. Matt's going to help me platinum it. Uh, I'm really on a trophy kick for some reason lately. Ding! Because you've been hanging around with Matt and Moose. Too I know much. what. Right. What's happening? Uh, <laughs> Horizon, I still I I think Horizon with a few tweaks to the systems and a few minor changes for a sequel, I think that sequel is gonna be it's gonna be the thing PlayStation holds high above their head and says, Look, we did it. We did it. They they but need to I, lose that res- they need to lose the resources and they need to make this game don't feel like nope, too much. But it's an RPG. I, I, it's it's, a, it, but it's they, an RPG, so they, you need the resources. You need the resources. It's it's pre historic uh, Tomb Raider. Okay, let me finish what I'm girls, let me finish what I'm ta- what I've been playing. We don't games. need to talk about Horizon. We can save that for another show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, brah! More uh, PlayStation. Horizon. What else have I? Oh, I played a lot of Overwatch, uh, Axiom Verge. Uh, I downloaded. I finally downloaded Pyre, Hellblade, and Sundered, which I'm really excited to play through Hellblade because that game looks super interesting and super. I've been watching people play. Uh, it looks it just, it just yeah. looks like I want to know how that character feels. Like I just. I, I feel like that, that story is going to be super relatable it, in some fashion it, to a lot of people. It really does feel like Heavenly Sword, just the feel and the vibe of it. They kind of kept that spiritual successor thing alive yeah. Yeah. with it. So I'm like, I want to play it. Yeah, and I was talking... I want to I, I wanna hear it yeah. before playing it. I, uh, I was talking to Jesse White, and he said that uh, he's, pl- he's played it like three times, I think, already. <laughs> So, yeah, he's platinum. Yeah, he's platinum. Yeah, so uh, can't wait to play that. And then uh, there's something else I played too. But I played a lot of games this week for some reason. Uh, really, really good week for me. So, uh, but yeah. Anyways, now that we spent 30 minutes <laughs> kind of talking about what we've been playing, uh, let's get into the news. Yes, Ed. Yes. What's happening this week? My goodness, what did happen this week? So many indie games that's being ported to Switch came out. Um, it was announced that Mutant Mutts, um, Super Meat Boy, 
and uh, Apollo Justice is coming to Switch. Um, and if for anyone who likes Drinkbox, just out of the blue, <laughs> they brought out Severed for uh, I know for no Switch. F- no fanfare or anything. Yeah, yeah. So you guys can play all of those games. Well, you can play several on Switch, but the other three are coming uh, later on this year. Um, I think Super Meat Boy and Muta Must is coming in August. I think there's uh, that they're coming uh, real soon. So yeah, all of that drop. But the really big drop is that the 3DS is getting a Samus uh, limited edition. Yeah, they, for the 3DS XL. they announced that like the day after we recorded earlier this week, <laughs> like yeah. literally like a couple hours after we recorded. I almost messaged you was like Ed, we need to add on to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I did say that, like, dude, we need a bonus episode. <laughs> um, uh, it is going to be dropping out September 15th with the game that's coming out with the uh, game. It is, yes. Um, but this the, the 3ds XL Samus won't have the game, but oh. it's dropping alongside with oh, the okay. game. I was gonna um, say I was like I thought a lot of people were mad because it didn't come with the game. Yeah. Oh. Um. If you look at the, if you are able to check it online, it's red with the diamond kind of block stairs of like you think of Cubert, um, with Samus kind of doing her lean back and shooting, like that kind of pose. Um, looks really nice. I don't know if it's orange, but it looks red. Um from uh from the way that it looks yeah uh yeah it looks it looks cool but i am not gonna go out of my way to try to buy another 3ds <laughs> right. uh, it's 199.99 and GameStop is taking pre-orders did you you didn't mention brawl out did you did you see this uh, no um i i heard of it um and it was just like for smash fans um uh, who you know who need their fix? Um, it. I just didn't check the trailer out for it. Yeah, it looks kind of cool. Um, probably won't get it. Not gonna lie. So, yeah. lot of a lot of indie games though. I will be getting Mutant Muds and Super Meat Boy, most likely. Super Meat Boy's so good. Ugh. Ugh. I played it because I didn't have a 360. So. It was free on PS4 at one point. That thing, yeah, it was free on PS4. That thing will run on like a potato. Yeah. Like, I don't see how you haven't played it so far. <laughs> it probably runs you know, on your refrigerator. <laughs> it's, like, it's the next Doom. Oh, did you guys see, uh, speaking of different things, did you see somebody converted the Wii U gamepad into a Windows 10 PC thing? Yeah, I did. To play, to play Wii U games? <laughs> yeah, it was like a Wii U. They were like, somebody turned the Wii U gamepad into a PC to emulate Wii U games. <laughs> that was like what? That was cool though. Oh man, that that system is like I don't know. Somebody's going to do something really interesting with that gamepad at some point. Uh, anyways. Lots of indie games coming. Woo! Sorry. Yeah. Are you guys are you guys uh are you guys going to go to your Best Buy stores to go play in the Nintendo World Championship qualifiers? No. No. You should. I can't. Corey, go I'm too wreck busy. people. Go I'm, wreck people. In what? What are my wrecking people? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. They they have the qualifiers. I don't even know what the heck it is. It's, uh, it's coming to New York, right? Uh, yeah, it's going to be in New York City in October. Um, they have the ultimate. It says the Nintendo fans will put their gaming skills to the ultimate test in an ep- epic battle to win the Nintendo World Championship. It kicks off with eight qualifying events at Best Buy stores across the United States. Um, I don't even know what the the qualifiers are. Uh, oh, so the first qualifiers, uh, Mario Kart. Deluxe. It's not. It's no. It's actually Mario Kart Seven. Ew. Or what? DS. Uh huh. That's weird. Right. Why wouldn't they um, just do Mario Kart 8? Then they have then they have upcoming demos for Mario Kart Odyssey or, or Mario Odyssey and then Metris, Metroid Samus Returns. Um, yeah, so no, that's that's weird. That's the first qualifier is Mario Kart. That's weird. Mario Kart Seven of all things. I think maybe it was uh, one of those things. Probably. Um, 
it's because people can bring their 3ds's so uh-huh. that way they and they can do the what the heck was it called Corey? the you know where you can download the download play or whatever it was called yeah where someone doesn't have a cart yeah i think that's probably why they're doing it that way it's just so that way they don't have to set up a bunch of kiosks and stuff like that to try and accommodate yeah. everything that's the early game share <laughs> <laughs> if you look at it uh, and plus I think they're probably doing it to for people uh, who want to practice and who want to get it that's kind of good marketing because people could go like down buy the rebuy the game or they could if they have physical copies at the store at Best Buy they could go pick up the game and practice so when they go for the qualifier, uh, qualifier um, they will have some skill and practice and be well ready to go so yeah no, but um, but as far as Nintendo news, Ed, do you got something before I can mention one more thing? Uh, um, because I don't want to interrupt your flow. No, uh, there's there's no uh, flow, the one, Ray. The, okay, Ray. I just uh, want to say the, shout out to my friend, the big happy pink blob that is Kirby, because he just celebrated his 25th anniversary. Oh, uh, I, I mean, I got one last story. Uh, uh, um, GameCube listings on Nintendo websites raises hope for Switch, but don't get too excited. They think it's a data entry, but um, their hit this uh, when it got released, they were hitting the the Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion Witch in the Wardrobe, Tony Hawk's Underground Two, Doshin the Giant, and Sonic Adventure DX Director's Cut. Yeah. So they were kind of hinting at games for uh, GameCube coming to the system, but um, they don't know if that's true or not. But it could be yeah. where they had to re re update listings because of digital whatever because it's been X amount of years. I mean that could be taken with a grain of salt with never you see stuff like that. Yeah, because they may have had to re re update everything with like the SRB and stuff like that. So that's why they're getting new game listings again. So because it's been X amount of years since the last time they got the approval for the listings and all that. Digital rights is fun. Yeah, I don't. I don't think. I don't know. I don't. I just don't think that virtual console is coming this year, and I don't think it's going to come until after Nintendo gets all these. You know, every month we have a big title coming out. I don't think Nintendo wants to hinder sales of those games by releasing virtual console right now. Like, because you know what? That's the weirdest thing ever. Okay, because taking. Taking a moment here to kind of talk about that, Corey, and you can shoot me later because you're going to be like, Ray, you derailed everything and you talk forever. No, because we, um, actually ha- we have questions about the, the GameCube virtual console. That okay. I get so, to, so just um, continue. So time. my thing is, my whole thing is, is that um, my whole thing is with everything Um, You look at backwards compatibility, right? Whereas Xbox is doing it via their digital and discs. PlayStation is doing it with their PS Now and their classics. And then you have Nintendo doing it with the eShop virtual console and that kind of stuff, right? Why is it that Nintendo gets the least amount of crap for making you buy the same old game over and over again? Like across all of the Nintendo things that I've had that have the virtual shop on it, Mm-hmm. I've bought Super Mario Brothers like at least five times. Like I kid you not. Like how many times do I got to buy that game again before they're like, "Hey, no, we're gonna tie this to this, so you don't have to buy it ever again." I think the co- the coding is probably different for those systems, but you also got to realize that Nintendo out of the gate when they introduced Wii U, bam, you can play your GameCube games on the system, so you don't have to do eShop if you don't want to. Um, when they did 3DS, you could play your old DS cards. Don't forget the regular DS when it first came out, you was able to do Game Boy events games on it. So it, I think they're backwards compatible. They were more focused on their physical than they were on digital. Where Microsoft and Sony didn't believe in uh, backwards compatible. Look at PlayStation 3 when it first came out. You know, when they had the 20 gig one, you was able to do PS2, but then they put a pet down on patch where you couldn't even do it no more. So Nintendo gets the less crap about it. I mean, they might get crap because of the same game being over and over on other systems, but that's all optional. If you buy it once, you don't have to buy it again on that system. You just make that decision that you want to buy it again. 
But yeah. I think Nintendo was more focused on fiscal backwards compatibility, where everybody who was yelling at Microsoft and Sony was just like, we want to play our old system fiscal games on the system. Everybody yeah. was everybody wanted to play Xbox, the regular Xbox games on their 360. Microsoft didn't believe in that. Sony did the same thing. They didn't believe that. And well, they, Sony did believe in it, but it came back and made the PlayStation 599 US dollars. Yeah, and uh, like I said, <laughs> that's what happened. Uh, but and like they I decided uh, to cut it to make it cheaper. And, right. But like I said, they they patched it for that not to happen. But it, it was just like they didn't a lot of gamers didn't care because they felt like if they're going to spend all this money, why can't they not use why? Why is Nintendo doing it and they can't get that same kind of treatment for their current system? Like, if I'm spending all this money, why can I not play some of these old games? Because you're I, I, the people understand that those old systems are going to be obsolete, but people invest a lot of money into those systems and those games, and they want to continue playing them. You know, Microsoft learned that with Xbox One because they're doing 360 games and they're doing uh, the regular Xbox games, like that, that whole category. Category. So now that's going to have people looking for old games that they want to buy from people. So that's money making for our resellers. That's going to interest people to pick up an Xbox One because now they could go back and play those old games. People don't want to do PlayStation now because it's still laggy and it's some janky mess. They still don't got that together. Yeah, no, I mean, and and to a point though, the numbers show that people, as much as a big hype that people put around on the internet about backwards comp- mm-hmm. compatibility, the normal average gamer can give two hoots less about it. You might some people. Well, yeah, I'll give you that. But there are some people who see an old game and just like I wish I played that game when it came out. And a lot of people say that more about on a Nintendo system than they do anything else than PlayStation or Microsoft. Yeah, but Nintendo's always been the big proponent for backwards compatibility, which why the Switch when it was announced that hey, it's using different cartridges and you're not going to be able to play your DS games on it. You're not going to be able to play, you know, your, you know, those games that it's going to have its own separate thing, that it's different. And um, remember the big outrage about that. And then it's simmered down. Now people are loving it. So I think mm-hmm. it's just one of those things that like it's the, the very loud vocal minority that take over the conversation in the gaming space with us. Yeah. And, and, and lo- that's what I see. And a lot of people keep their Nintendo systems. Some people might trade it in, but because Nintendo holds value. Like, dude, there are still Wii games, for example, like original Wii games that are freaking $90 <laughs> right now. You look, I mean, the Metroid Prime Trilogy collection is like 150 new on Amazon, and Fire Emblem is $99 new on Amazon. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm, like, I'm just listing examples. <laughs> I'm agreeing you know with I mean? you, like, Ray. I know, that's, the, that's what I mean. It's like Nintendo games has always kept the vet out of all of, this, all of the big well, three. Can I tell you, even value. even even third party games on Wii uh, keeps value. Mm-hmm. People are still looking for boom blocks. People still want to buy the old Kirby games. Um, well, I don't even know that's Nintendo. Like people was looking for. Um, uh, it's the one that Capcom did where the guy rings the bell with the little monkey. Um, I cannot think of a game. It was like a uh, kind of a uh, adventure puzzle game. People still want that one. Like, there are games from third parties that people are looking for that has a high value. Like, at, uh, at one point, people were still were trying to buy a Zombie U for Wii U when it came out. Like, like I think, like, last October... Zombie U is $8 on Amazon. Oh. Brand new. Right now. Wow. <laughs> because it got released other places, that's why. Had it not been released yeah, everywhere I know. else... I'm, I'm just... I just... I just... If people want Zombie U, I want to know where they can get it. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh. not to get it cheap, but I'm just. But you know, I think with Nintendo, it's just like once you trade it in, it might become really hard to find. Where you can literally now just walk into GameStop uh, or somebody's garage sale and find those big triple A titles that's supposed to be you know, moved the industry forward and was a big seller, like, you can find tons of them traded in or at a, or a garage sale for, like, $3. Yeah. 
So it's like the what care the for are you those going to. I want to go there. I need to. Dude, I see people going. I see people going to freaking uh, garage sales all day, and they're they're like, yeah, I picked up this like Super Nintendo with like ten games for like fifty bucks. I'm like, I want where I I want that. <laughs> when, where, how, and why? Yeah, it's it's crazy. But... And then look, and then if, if it's a rare, some rare games, like like really rare games that that they got the cart, the must have really wanted you like like six hundred, eight hundred some dollars. Like they are up. Now I will say this: anyone who sells Panzer Dragoon for ten dollars for the Sega CD is an idiot. I'm sorry, but if you sell that at a garage sale and for only ten dollars, you're a complete idiot. Because <laughs> Panzer Dragoon for Sega CD is one, I think, probably one of the most expensive, expensive games that people still want to buy. Yeah, or but look for. To be fair, I don't think I don't think Grandma's keeping up on the latest eBay trends for oh, rare no. video games. <laughs> yeah, because that uh, that one Olympus game for it the NES that people were trying to scan for like twelve hundred some dollars. Yeah. Uh, did you see that NES collection that's going on eBay for almost thirty thousand dollars right now? Yeah, uh, that's crazy. It's like not today. So yeah, Panzer Panzer Dragoon uh, for the Sega Saturn is going for roughly fifty bucks right now on an, on eBay. Really? Mm-hmm. Who the heck is selling it for fifty dollars? There are seventeen used and new offers from forty six to forty eight dollars right now. Wow, that has to be a scam. Because no, I'm looking at I'm looking at it right. Actually, it's I, through <laughs> Amazon. Actually, not even eBay. Amazon. Oh, not that's very weird because that was like one of the most expensive games people were looking for, like to buy, like with the the cart. Uh, when we put the CD and the box, like everything to it, like it was going for like fifteen hundred. I mean, plus. factory sealed. The factory sealed one is going for you know a thousand dollars, but unused condition. Uh huh. If you find it used, it's like fifty bucks. Oh wow! Just wow. Now the entire saga for Japan's or Dragoon is going for like eight hundred bucks. Like. Okay. Uh, how many games was it? Was it two, or is it three? Mm. I think uh, it's three. It's one, two, three, four discs, two games. So, because huh. I know they did one for the Xbox. I think. Did you guys ever play that horrible game, Lair? No, no. That game was so bad. I heard so bad. I read the uh, review in EGM. Uh, Crispin Boyer, he had to play the game, and he beat it. But it was like it was so hard to because everything was motion control based. Uh, anyways, yeah, games. What else yes. is happening, Ed? Um. Yeah, and uh, last but not least, um, they're making a uh, N64 uh, Pro Controller for the Switch. If you guys want to check that one out, so yeah. So, cool. where are the N64 games I can play with it? <laughs> I would get well, one if I could play N64 games. Well, well, probably people going to probably play when uh, Ukulele comes out. And maybe Smash. Mm, yeah. When, Did we talk about you, that Smash controller could, bin on last episode? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. What was I gonna say? Oh, oh uh, um, that. Did you that, see the ukulele uh, update? They are gonna announce something soon. So maybe by next episode, we'll have something to say on ukulele for Switch. Ah, uh, the Jackbox Party Pack also one or two is hitting on Switch on August seventeenth. Yeah. So, yay! Yeah, more party games. Bah, bah, bah. Sorry. <laughs> oh man, I love it, love it. Where did my questions go? I had questions open and now I lost it. It's your fault, Ed. 
what do you call the question block part of that? Uh, question block. Question block. Sure. There we go. Hey. Hey. hey that's I, pretty good. No, um, no trademark infringement there. Uh, Sonic Mania. Uh, is that tomorrow? Uh, the 15th. The collector's edition starts showing up at Best Buy already, though. Okay. Because I know it says uh, August 10th, North America for Nintendo download, and they got Sonic Mania. I don't know if it's a... Uh... Can Sonic just go somewhere for a while? Like, seriously? <laughs> Can it just uh, go somewhere for a while and then come back when it's better? I mean, you don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know anymore. Hey, it still sells. It still makes money. So it's mm. not going nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to get into the question segment of Nintendo Power Block. I have to do some, let's say, curation of the questions because uh, some of them are interesting. Did you get Disney Princesses questions like I do on our show? No. <laughs> Matthew Keel likes to ask this. I likes to ask Disney, Disney princess Disney princess questions. Matt Matt sees me once or twice a week, and he's like, "I'm good till next week," and then he doesn't talk to me ever. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Wow. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate you, jerk. But he's Love a you, hardworking man. You're fired. Just kidding, dude. That's all he does is work. I know that dude works way too much. Uh, Ed, where's yours? Oh, there we go. Okay, so. Here's the question block. First question from Josh Brandt, friend of show. Yes. Uh, the shot cast. You should go over there. Check it out. Uh, let's see. He says, with the release of Severed on Switch, what other indie games would you like to see ported over? Uh, I mean, I've said this many times. Uh, Hyperlight Drifter, N+, N++. Uh, Guacamelee. Guacamelee would be a good one. I think Apatheon, that uh, cool Metroidvania game on PSN, I think that would be a cool one to port over. I wouldn't mind seeing Bastion or Transistor or Pyre make their way over. Um, um, Jotun, I would like to see um, port it over. The Valhalla edition, that one was good. Gotta yeah. like that one. Uh, maybe start a Sanctuary. Yeah. Like, I think uh, it needs some kind of Souls game on there. Yeah, um, let's see, what else? I'm trying to think of, I mean, some of them are already making their way over, like Axiom Verge is already making its way over, Stardew Valley. Yeah. Uh, Stardew Valley's great. Yeah, I haven't played it yet, I've been waiting. Uh, Overcooked made it, has made its way over. Um, so, I mean, those are kind of the big ones right now. For me, it would be N++ would be like, or if they made like an N++ double pack where they put N++ and N++ in. Oh. Oh, you wouldn't ever see me again. Ever. Uh, the story of M Plus. I went from how it started off on I think DS or was it PC first? It started as a flash game, I think, on PC somewhere. Like I was just remember I just remember it being on DS first. Uh it came to DS after the Xbox because they it was an Xbox three sixty arcade exclusive for like three months and then it came to DS and V PSP? I don't know. One of them Sony handheld things. Um, but yeah, it was on DS. I have the DS version somewhere. I think it's the only physical cart I have left from <laughs> <laughs> somewhere that's not a Nintendo game. Um, <laughs> but yeah, man, that game is awesome. What about you, Ed? What do you want to see ported over to Switch indie game-wise? Uh pretty much probably like the same games that you just mentioned um i think huh, i would like a beat em up game i don't think no one no indie game has made a beat em up game yet that i know of i would like to see something like that on switch how about uh young oh you know what um morph I would, uh, um, karate contra, reptiles. Uh, what was the contra uh the contra game that came on PS3? Um Oh uh hardcore? Hard hardcorps. Yeah. No, yeah. 
Is it hard course? Yeah, Something but that's, like that. that was, I mean, that that's not really. I mean, neat. that's Sega Genesis, but it was the one that came out on PS3. I would like to see. Um, Bionic Commando 1 and 2, um, like that remake. Uh, I would like to see uh, Strider. I would like to see come to, uh, even though those, those are by like Capcom, I'm, I, I still kind of consider them somewhat indie, like double A games in a way. Oh. Yeah, like the, I would like to see some of the UB Art Engine games come over too. After Rayman, like some, Child of Light, either Child of Light and Valiant Hearts, or something new, you know, using that engine. I mean, they're, I know um, they're not really indie games, but they have the, they I, have that. I would like the uh, her story to come to uh, Switch. Is Undertale her... is Undertale getting a uh, release on Switch? No, it's just a PS4 right now. Yeah. I wish it, I would. Undertale is one of those ones that would be that would make a good fit. Um, yeah. Uh, what else would there? There would be, you know, what Gone Home would probably be a good, probably have a good fit on Switch. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Gone Home, Tacoma, Fire, Firewatch. Yeah. Don't starve. Oh, uh, The Witness and like Limbo, I think would both and Inside those three games would probably be a good mat- fit on Switch. Is Bastion getting released? Uh uh-uh. uh No. Yeah. I don't think uh I don't think they're on a, a Nintendo platform. Uh I forgot what company it is. Cause Bastion, Transporter, um and um Prior, I think those are only on Sony's play well, Pat Bastion was on three sixty. But I'll, it may be on one too. But everything, uh, everything I think is getting a release. Hey, you know what would be really fun, Corey? What? Towerfall Ascension. They, I think that's already been announced for Switch. Is that hard? Has that already been announced? Yeah, I'm just but it's not. Stuff that, it's like way off. It's coming. It's yeah. coming. It's just not. Well, like Nintendo has been doing this weird thing where they put out like two or three indie games a week that they like heavily promote and like because I think they announced that like before that nindy showcase they did a couple months ago mm-hmm. uh they announced that and then they showed off a couple others during the nindy showcase like graceful explosion machine and uh steam world dig 2 and all those games so uh yeah there's a whole list of games coming but like i don't know like nintendo's been doing an, an okay job promoting the indie games that are coming but then there's just like things that just show up that are weird like that weird vroom broom game that weird witch bicycle looking game and then there's like there's like that weird golf game and i don't know it's been weird they probably just left it up for developers if like they probably got their approval and let those uh developers you know and not do their own announcements so yeah (sighs) ah Well, I think we answered that question. I really want M plus plus on Switch, dude. Like for real. But I would also want them to sell a, jo- a Joy-Con with a, D- a real D pad, not the buttons. So, uh, um, not the buttons. Not the buttons. What's, Man, what's, we haven't done Car- that in a while. Was uh, <laughs> was Cardamari uh, a indie Car- game? No. But the yeah, first but one that was wasn't that only on Sony? Yeah, yeah. it was published by Namco. Yeah. Uh, so. But I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know if that was an indie game. If they could bring that one back. Uh, it's technically not an indie game because I mean Namco is a big publisher, so eh. yeah. But wasn't it really? No, it was physical. I thought they only did it digital uh, uh-huh. when it first came out. Rob Winaldi asks, "When we when will we see Virtual Console? What titles from the GameCube catalog do you want to see first? I think they need to launch Virtual Console with GameCube titles." And I think they need to launch with the GameCube launch lineup, which was Luigi's Mansion, Pikmin, Super Smash Brothers, Wave Race, and something else. What was the other one? What was the Rogue other Squadron? One? Yeah, Rogue yeah. Squadron. Yes, there. They need to do that. Uh, I would, I would say next year, and I would go with Metroid Prime, Metroid Prime Two, so we get people hyped up. No, we for... want a Metroid Prime Trilogy HD collection next year, Ed. That's no, I think I think it's gonna launch next, probably by next spring, <laughs> next summer, and I think it's gonna be you're gonna get your Mario Sunshine, because that's like a staple. I think that'll um, probably be later. No, I think that they're gonna launch Virtual Console with a Mario game, and they're gonna promote yeah. GameCube with a Mario game. 
Yeah. Um, I, I think I think if they do a Mario game, it won't be on. It won't be GameCube. They I know, but we're, ta- we're talking about we're talking about GameCube specifically. Well, th- well, the thing about it is, I think they'll do Sunshine later. I want to see. Or, I want to see uh, Custom Robo come back. <laughs> Custom Robo. Uh, that's that's gonna take a lot of marketing. I I think they'll do Pikmin. Uh, before they do, uh, I think Sunshine. they're gonna do a lot of their first party. Uh, yeah, no, it'll be a lot of first party. So we'll probably see. We'll uh, probably see what was was what was there was a Kirby game for GameCube, right? Yeah, Air was, Ride, the racing game. Air, it, we'll probably see Air Ride because yeah, everybody's well, everybody's gonna want Eternal Darkness. Um, well, that can't t- happen. Why? Why not? Nintendo why owns it. Nintendo owns it. Do they own the property? Yeah, yeah. That's why they Nintendo haven't been it. able to get a sequel. That's why. Who did it? Silicon Knights hasn't been able to Silicon do a sequel. Silicon Knights got shut down because they, that's, yeah. That's why they the, haven't the, the been able 60. to do a sequel because Nintendo won't let them. <laughs> Nintendo owns well, that first game. Well, because Microsoft ended up buying the Silicon Knights. No, that's why they couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. No, they didn't. Mm-hmm. Yes, they did. Mm-hmm. Because don't forget, mm-hmm. uh, Silicon Knights. Um, when Nintendo they were was publishing, with them. they were publishing. Too human, right, but don't but forget. They didn't buy but don't forget, uh, Silicon Knights did that Metal Gear Solid for a GameCube for Konami and Nintendo. That was a three-way. Uh, that was a three-way deal, and then Microsoft ended up buying Silicon Knights no, and closed Microsoft them when that unreal. No, they did not because X Men Destiny was a game that Silicon Knights did, and did, they they my, what happened was Microsoft published Too Human. Uh huh. Oh, see, that's probably game. why. I thought and, they but had then, brought up. But then in 2011, they released X Men Destiny, which was multi platform for Activision. For Activision. Oh, see. So I they, thought... weren't, they weren't a first party Microsoft studio. They just had Microsoft basically footed the bill for Two Human. For Two Human. See, that's what I thought they ended up buying them because of, like, after that Metal Gear one, it seemed that they made a big deal that Microsoft and Silicon Knights were working together. So it, it sounded like they uh, Microsoft had ended up buying them out. Yeah, and then they had that whole mess that happened that started in 20, uh, 2007 and ended in 2012. With the Unreal with, Engine. With, yeah, with Epic Games and Unreal. Yeah. Two Human and X-Men Destiny. The, the Sandman, the Box Ritualist, and Siren and the Maelstrom. They were never released, but they had to destroy the last three. Those were three games that were in development. Um, but X Men Destiny and Two Human, all retail copies were to be recalled and destroyed. Funny enough, I actually have a copy of X Men Destiny still sealed that I won from a podcast trivia for Activision's uh, One of Swords podcast back in 2011. So I actually still have a sealed copy of that. <laughs> wow. Wow. I never opened it. It's for PS3, and I have it, and it's just sitting there. It's going to be one of those things that I just hold on to forever. Nice. Hold on to it. Hold on to it tight. <laughs> <laughs> well, they wanted it destroyed. It's just like I don't want to destroy it. I want to keep it because that's well, shoot. technically part of gaming history now. Pretty much. I wonder. Um, did that happen also with that uh, Wizard San Andreas? They were trying to do a recall. No, and that the- was when hot coffee hit, and there was a thing, and then they had to go through and. Uh, you're making me use Google more than I usually normally do. Well, because the because the San Andreas mod was only on PC; it was never on console. Uh, but they, rec- I think they did a recall for all of them. Yeah, Hot Coffee is normally an inaccessible mini game in the 2004 video game Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Uh, it was a mod that was created within the Windows, with the Microsoft Windows port of GTA San Andreas in 2005. The mod enabled access to the mini game. Uh, the controversy behind it then led us to get the adults only rating. Remember when that became a thing? Yeah. yeah. For the ESRB? Yeah. Um, but the assets for the mini game were also discovered in PlayStation 2 and Xbox versions. Uh, people and because people found ways to enable the mini game uh, via console hacking tools. So they had to hack their system, which is oh dang. See that's that's what I was wondering. Just like I thought it was only because of PC. Uh, 
Yeah, so what happened was in July 2005, uh, it got changed over from mature to adults only. Uh, they stopped manufacturing the current version of the game and produced a new version that no longer had the hot coffee assets to be enabled or anything like that. And then it was just like we fund people for fifteen dollars or something like that. Yeah, if you bought the original, you can you could send back the original one and then get a fifteen dollar refund and a new copy of the game that didn't have hot coffee in it. That was so stupid. <laughs> You think people are going? You think people are going to trade in that? I wonder. I, I wonder how many people did that. Oh, but yeah. But for GameCube uh, Retro Console, <laughs> uh, going back to the story, Grand Theft Auto <laughs> now on GameCube. <laughs> oh, definitely Ikaruga Skies of Arcadia. I would like to see on um, Retro Console. Nice, nice. Uh. Yeah, I mean, I I just want all of Nintendo's games on oh, Switch all the time. Definitely, Soul Calibur Two has to be on there. Namco would be Soul idiotic not to. I mean, that that would. I mean, that Nintendo has a really good working relationship with Namco. I don't see why they couldn't do that. I mean, didn't didn't PS Two just get Soul Calibur Two on PS Two Classics? I think, I think so. So. Maybe. Uh, okay, we have one more question to answer. Uh, where okay. did it go? Ed, where did it go? I saw ah. it. Oh, Todd at Todd Oxtra, friend of show, Secret Friends Unite, go check it out. It's awesome. Yes. Todd Oxtra asks, how will Nintendo do streaming and video upload, uploads commentary without a built-in mic? Are we using the app for that? To be honest, I don't think Nintendo is too worried about streaming or anything. If you want to stream, there's multiple ways to do that uh, outside of just pressing the share button on controllers. So I, I honestly don't think Nintendo's worried about video streaming at all. I think that capture buttons for screenshots, and I don't think we're going to get video anytime soon. So Yeah, I think people are just still going to be watching it on Twitch. If they want to see streaming, and if it, I think with the app, they I think they should still just use Bluetooth. You know, just give that option to Bluetooth to use. Yeah, but, I don't I don't understand this whole like <laughs> thing with the app and stuff. I just think it's just not going the way they would like it to go. <laughs> yeah, I think they I think they just they they don't want all that functionality to affect. The system, which will probably affect your game, like slow down and stuff like that. I think they're trying. I think they were just trying to find a way around it, so none of that stuff would interfere with the game, with your game time or gameplay. Yeah. Uh, so. What do you think, Ray? Right. Oh, sorry, Ed. Oh. Oh no, but I think people are just using Discord and sh- and uh, Skype for like the chat stuff. But I I say Bluetooth would just be fine, but they could do it. You get it right. Yeah, I mean, I think Switch. <laughs> I was ta- who was I talking? To? I think I was talking to Matt, or oh, I was in a group chat with Matt and Moose earlier today, and I was we were talking about stuff, and I said, you know, PlayStation's kind of going to be my home console now, and like Switch is going to be my portable console. Uh, you know, that and the 3DS are going to be interchangeable because like I don't really remember the last time I played my Switch docked, to be honest, and like the dock is going to be for streaming and stuff because. Uh, I'm prepping a lot of stuff for for streaming, so I'm pretty excited for that. But like the dock is going to be used primarily for that, and like you know, I think the switch. I think everything looks really good on the screen, and I don't know. It's just, it's convenient to play handheld mode. Uh, see, I just I see think- like I th- I think Nintendo's looking at it like that though. Like people want to take it with you, so why? Why bother putting all these resources and technology into streaming that only maybe like one or two percent of people are going to use? Because the people that want to stream have the setup already, right? They have their Elgato mm-hmm. game capture, they have OBS or XSplit downloaded, or you right know, right other <laughs> other ways to do it. And like, you know, the the people who aren't using that don't really probably don't really care. So like, it's like. It's like that small percentage of people who stream from their PS4, you know, without the, the 
the capture equipment and stuff, right? Like, yeah, it's convenient. Yeah. Like when we're jumping in a party and and Matt and I were streaming Bloodborne the other night, it was really just convenient to hit that share button and broadcast. But like, at the same time, I think Nintendo's audience for that streaming is much smaller. Well, I think streaming in general is kind of small. I don't think a lot of people really play various games. You got Overwatch, Bloodborne, um, Player uh, Player Unknown, Battleground, um, Dead by Daylight, Friday the Thirteenth, maybe yeah, Street Fighter Five games. or some fun. Like it's very low on how many games are being streamed. If you look on Twitch, right. I don't know much about Mixer just yet. I haven't really dived into that. I'm looking but, at Twitch right now, and you could probably be, could not be more uh, uninformed, I guess I'll go with. Because you do realize that gaming content and streaming is now consumed more than anything on network TV. No, he's saying, like, but, only games. Certain, only the games, like the games that are being streamed. Like, the pop streamed. streams are popular, but it's only the this, like, s- small segment of, like, 15 to 20 games that are extra popular yeah. you know like player unknowns is super popular so people are watching that dota super popular league super popular overwatch you know it's just those games have such huge followings that people are watching right destiny is still popular bloodborne is still popular final fantasy 14 and 15 are popular you, you i know, mean but, there's all uh, kinds of different but, games it just depends on what you're interested in i, I guess think, i think i i haven't really seen a lot of people <laughs> stream final fantasy 14 um mm-hmm. I know people talk about it and maybe that's just probably my twitter feed like twitter friends and stuff they're sharing more of the playstation 4 one but i think if people are streaming it it might be the pc version yeah that joey, they're streaming joey streams the pc version a lot uh, i mean i wish yeah. i could i wish it gave me a count on how many because i'm in the final fantasy 14 online mm. streamers thing right now and there's this wall upon wall of stream and stream and stream and stream right now but they don't um, tell what uh they don't tell like console or um, no like oh okay they just tell the gay it's just the game yeah yeah i think people i think more people are doing it on p streaming on pc because I, I think a lot of people who do play it uh on console i think they just play it with their friends and they don't even think about streaming. I actually i know a lot of people that do actually stream it from ps4 um like paul keeper rapture he streams it um my uh-huh. friend claire does my friend Maya sometimes does. So, I mean, I know like three or four people just on the top of my head that that stream it from the PS4. I myself have that problem where I have the nice Elgato capture and stuff like that. Um, I now realize that if I want to stream stuff from PS4, I need another connector Uh in order to get game chat over the... uh, to get like party chat over the uh, sound because it doesn't pull all of the party chat. Um but I normally, normally for me lately, it's just easier for me to hit that share button, use the PS4 streaming that's already there, and just go from there. And I stream pretty much almost every day now. Um, and it's been like that way. Like I went, I did it with Destiny before, and then I did it with Diablo for a while. And then now it's been more like Overwatch and then Injustice are the two that I've been streaming heavily um, lately. And I, I do stream Grand Theft Auto every now and then. Yeah, and see, I only use when I when I'm not doing pod and play. I, if I do stream, it's just it's literally for the less learn series, um, because I I think I get so into that single player campaign in the game that I'm just like I'm focused on playing that and, and not being a person that like, hey guys, blah blah blah, and you know you're talking. And yeah, playing. yeah. So it's I find that that for me anyway, I agree with you because I find it a lot easier to have that conversation when I'm in a more social atmosphere, when I'm playing the multiplayer games, rather than when I'm trying to concentrate or figure out a puzzle or, you know, beat this part in the game. Like I find it fun, but my, and I'm a very personable person and you got, I'm, I'm out there sometimes, but I find it easier when I'm in a social setting where I don't have to really focus or concentrate so much on what's there in front of me that I can kind of be the social and I can kind of, you know, let multitask, so to speak, like, be personal to the viewers and whoever's watching and also, you know, interact with my friends and joke around and have fun. And while we're talking yeah. trash about what's going on in the game, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. I need to start streaming more. I'm going to start streaming. I think, well, I mean, I've been streaming the last couple nights, but, uh, like I said, the game room is like being prepped for all kinds of stuff. So like streaming's in the near future. And now that I'm editing less, I've, yeah. I'm, I'm 
gonna make some time to stream so it, there, there's just something about nintendo games like pers- like just personally for me that i don't feel like streaming if i ever get out uh, a capture card or anything like that or even if nintendo does a streaming service i feel like something about nintendo games for me personally makes it more memorable when i'm just playing it by myself and nobody else is wa- else watching because it makes my discussion with other people more enjoyable than the world just watching like microsoft and sony i could stream their games and chat about it or you know teach from it or anything but like nintendo it's just like there's something more personal with me playing their games and stuff and talking to actual people or you know, like even talking to you guys like it feels more personal for me to just play the game without the world watching yeah i uh yeah i i think the i think the most interesting things to stream for nintendo right now would probably be splatoon or zelda speedruns i think those are the two things for streaming mario, like, kart, mario kart's always uh really that yeah see that yeah. surprises me like i i mean i love mario kart but i think that kind of surprises me that mario kart's popular in streaming and arms and arms is, pro- is getting a little bit popular like people are still playing it um i like arms but i don't know if i would ever consider it like a competitive fighting game i just think it's a fun game to like run roll through and try to unlock stuff and then play with your friends i don't know if i would ever. i think people i think people never thought that about smash brothers and look at the following that it has mm-hmm. yeah i mean but i can see i can see where, where what you're saying though Corey. like arms is not definitely that strategic fighter kind of thing it's just goofy it's fun. so it's so deliberate yeah. man like everything you do in that game is so deliberate you can't like you can't fake people out like in smash you can like duck or do the double duck and jump down to the next platform or jump or or jump backwards and stuff and like do the fake grab stuff but like in arms everything you do is super deliberate and that's that like on one hand it adds a layer of strategy but on the other hand it's like you're committed and so like people know what you're going to do as soon as you do it and... well it i think when it comes to evo japan uh next year like people are going to tune in to that arms because they want to see. I think when you when you got if you was going to stream something like ours, people are going to see what can you do in this game that really shouldn't be able to be done. Yeah, you know, and and Street Fighter games like th- that games are so technical. You know, gamers who play that and learn it, they know the techniques and they know the technicality of what that game can do. Because arms is just like so goofy, and you kind of gotta wait. Um, it, you know, there's kind of like a weight system and stuff, and, and a balance thing. You want to see what are people going to do? Because it really is up to chance in arms than it is into something like Street Fighter or even Injustice Two or, or even like Killer Instinct. Yeah. Ah, <sighs> video games, popular. Who would have thought? Uh well, I think that's going to wrap our show for this episode. Ray, we need to pl- we need to play some Overwatch. I don't know what you're we doing. We do need to we do we do need to play some Overwatch. So you just got to let me know when and where. Yeah. And we can do I it. I need to set up I need to finish setting up this game room for for streaming. We should stream some Overwatch together. We should we should be just best friends for Overwatch. <laughs> we we are best friends just for Overwatch now. Add that to the to the thing. Ugh. Just let everybody know I'm not part of the Overwatch talk. Uh, I, I know you should definitely give it a try. You know what? One of my fr- one of my really good friends was like, "Oh, I hate Overwatch. No. I can't stand it. This, that, the other." And then, mm. he, and he if you bring up Destiny and, and Borderlands in this Overwatch talk, I'm smacking you. <laughs> yeah. When are you not going to smack me? But they're they're <laughs> nothing alike. Nothing <laughs> at all alike. Um, I, but yeah. Um, <laughs> No, but he he tried it and now he's hooked. He's just like, I love this game. I don't know why I hated it so much. It does nothing for me. It, that, but see, you're well, you've always been as long as I've known you, you've always been more of a single player kind of game. Um, gamer. I, do, I do I do some multiplayer stuff. He plays with, Titanfall. Yeah, but he plays it on Xbox because it was cheaper on Xbox. I'm, tr- I'm, I'm just trying to can say. I tell you. Can I tell you, Ray, the reason why I dig it on Xbox? Because PS4 didn't like have 
It was PS4 like dollars at, at launch. You want it like two weeks no, after I actually, launch on Xbox? I actually pay sixty five dollars because I got the deluxe. I got the deluxe edition. Yeah, but the I standard edition at that time, like two or three weeks after launch, because it was selling like crap on Xbox. It was twenty dollars for oh, the standard. Oh, true. It was edition. selling the same thing on PS4. Only reason why I got it on Xbox is because of. Um, yeah, well, of course, the demo. I played the demo on Xbox, and it felt really good. Um, external hard drive for Xbox One was available, and I had a lot of games, and I didn't have the space, so I had to throw it on my external hard drive. PS4 didn't have external. You can't, you, you can't, you can't use that excuse anymore, Ed. You can't use that argument anymore because it's available on both now. Yeah, you it took Sony this, about, you, what, four years? <laughs> but the thing is, is that they, because they've always made their hard drive so accessible and easy to upgrade. And change out. It's never been an issue at this discussion, so we're not going to. We get have. Back. We're not going to get back into <laughs> it. But um, I don't even know. Yeah, what to say anymore. To, you need to play some games on PS4 with us, man. Get get on the PS4 train and play some games uh, with us. Uh, I'm all, I'm I'm usually I'm usually on whenever I can be. Usually, especially in the evening time. Usually, if I'm streaming or if you have a game like I have Titanfall, but I have it on PS4. Yeah. Um, I do have. Do you have Gears on Xbox? Yes, uh, we need to stream wonderful. some yeah, horde mode. I have wonderful. We should stream some horde mode at some yeah, point. Yeah, we should we should get together, play some horde mode, and uh, play some Gears Four then. Because a cross play with the yeah. PC. Yep. Because yeah. I could play it with you guys on PC. Yes. Do you um, um, did you see there's a adapter that's coming for a PC, like as a wireless adapter, uh, for Microsoft for uh, uh, for, for the like Xbox One controller. There's no there. reason it plugs in directly right there. Yeah, dude. and if it, you it, if you have the special if you have a connector on your PC, it'll connect the uh, the new ones. See, click, connect, see that's wireless the, that's right the thing. off. Right, that's the thing with mine. My PC doesn't have that, so I would have to use like that USB um, to connect. Because I tried to, uh, um, there was a game that I tried to play on PC with the Xbox One controller, and it wasn't reading. Welcome to Arsenal so. X, the GR Xbox show. <laughs> I, I, I do have a confession to make. Did, uh, I, have gone confession. No. <laughs> I, I have a confession because I no longer have an Xbox or an Xbox controller. I play my Xbox my Xbox games that I can play with a DualShock on PC. So it's a weird console-ception. I mean, you can play with a Switch Pro controller too now. So that's pretty cool. Is, does your computer have Bluetooth in it, uh, Ray? I have Bluetooth, yeah. See, that's why that's that's why my uh, my system doesn't have Bluetooth before my computer. But the Bluetooth and Sony's thing is is weird. Is Sony thing is weird. So I actually had to get one of the Bluetooth adapters. Yeah, dumbbell things for it. I mean, I paid four dollars for it on Newegg last year, so it wasn't terrible. Nice. Wasn't really terrible. Yeah, yeah. I think you only could get those probably. I think at Best Buy or have to order them online because I haven't seen them like at Target, and we don't mm-hmm. even just like. Why are we not getting all these accessories, Sony? <laughs> what the heck is going on? No. I think it's they're so niche that people won't buy them. Yeah, they would I, just, I just the shelves until they go clearance. Yeah. Well, you wrapping up, Corey, because you sound like you sound rather defeated. No, I'm just well, kind of trying to wrap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, this has been Nintendo Power Block. Thank you so much for watching and joining us. This was quite a multiple console discussion show. I'm sorry if you're here for Nintendo. We ended and began with not Nintendo, but <laughs> anyways. Uh, Go buy your Switch. And yeah. if, you, if you're feeling generous, buy me one. <laughs> this is on Lil Way. Buy so. me a second <laughs> one. <laughs> Just kidding. I do need a new memory card, though. I'm on Amazon right now. They're kind of expensive. I told you, Corey. Okay. I'm just, just saying I told you so. I know. I'm sorry. Uh, anyway, probably by the time I probably by the time I come there, we'll have to hit the Best Buy so I go back and record. Oh, Anyways, you can email us questions at nintendopowblock at gmail dot com or look for our Facebook threads. You can join our Facebook group, facebook dot com slash group slash ngr radio network or in or Nintendo Pow Block, facebook dot com slash group slash Nintendo Pow Block. Ed, where can we find you? Goodness. You guys can find me on Twitter at that retro go. Ray, why are you laughing? I'm gonna go pee while we uh, do Ray and Ed's <laughs> at outros. <laughs> uh, you guys can find me on Twitter at that retro code. You can hear my podcast, Optional Opinion, 
on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, and other podcast apps. Uh, it is a- available now. Uh, the discussion of it is talking about overrated and underrated games. So you guys can hear that episode. Um, you can read my review of uh, review of Bad Game Day on NGR Radio and at Skirmish Frogs, where I also do the moment where I talk about retro games and how they apply to my life. You can read the optional opinion blogs on IGN.com under anime. Also, check out uh, Arsenal X, uh, Let's Pod and Play, uh, World 1 1 on NGR Radio and other podcasts uh, that you guys want to hear. Um, I'm getting ready to do the beauty of video games. Mr. Corey Huston will be talking handheld games with me and i have uh ray asario's good co-host lee and rebecca talking pc and mobile with me um i will have a special guest for uh arcade and i will have a super special guest for to conclude everything so uh yeah and check out my let's learn series at the lyrical one on twitch.com yeah ray yes where can we find? All you? right, so you can find me L Ray uh, NY six one seven on Twitch, Twitter, uh, Instagram, basically all the console platform spaces. Same name E L R E Y N Y six one seven. You can find the show that I co-host Nerd Overdrive at uh, Facebook dot com forward slash Phoenix Overdrive, YouTube dot com forward slash Phoenix Overdrive. And SoundCloud.com forward slash Phoenix Overdrive. Uh, you can also find our shows on um, iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play Music by searching for Nerd Overdrive. Uh, find out our find our community Facebook page, uh, Facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash PO Nation. Uh, we discuss all the latest and great greatest in gaming news and all things nerd there. Um, you can you know find us on Twitter, Nerd underscore Overdrive. Also, at PHX underscore Overdrive on Twitter and Instagram as well. Um, we do stream our shows when they're live. We've been on a little bit of a break, and Lee's on the cusp of uh, doing his big PC upgrade that he's been talking about for the last like year plus. I see uh, so his car. We, we've been we've been down for the last like month or so, but we do have new shows incoming, so don't forget about us. Um, we do stream our episodes live, uh, Facebook Live on the Phoenix Overdrive. Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash PHX underscore overdrive and YouTube by adding a slash live to the end of our YouTube address. Uh, but I want to thank Corey again for having me on the show. Thanks, Ed, for having me on the show. It's always a great hey. time. You know, I love you guys. You guys are like you guys are like my brothers, as Lisa said, so much bromance. I you know, I love you both. So but thank you guys. And as I always say, game over for now. Rise above, guys. Yay. Yay. Um well. You can find me at Corey Hudson in HD on Twitter, Corey in HD on Instagram and Twitch. You can find me hanging out in the NGR Radio Facebook groups and on Twitter and all these other places. Uh, where else can you find me? I have no idea. NGRRadio.com, you can find all of our content, videos, breakouts. Like, subscribe, and share to our YouTube page, please. My wife is catching up with her YouTube page, and it's been up for two days. <laughs> so... Now it's you also have to remember that we, we do cover a, a select segment and have our target demographic, whereas... Hey, you know what? Grandma bought more... we too, okay? <laughs> 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 oh, man. That's the title of the episode. Grandma bought we too. Grandma brought we too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is true. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much for watching. Until next week, we love you. Bye, Bye. everybody. Woo-hoo.